Hey guys, what's up and welcome back to my channel and welcome to another eyeshadow palette review. Now this is another super, super highly requested one and I was a little on the fence based on my previous experience with the um, last palette from Huda Beauty. But I got it. I still bought it. So this is the Huda Beauty New Nude Palette. This is the latest release from the brand. Um, it's essentially a palette of all sort of nude neutral kind of tones. On the back it says, Huda's fresh take on the nude look. 18 gorgeous shades ranging from cool to warm tones, including 10 buttery mattes, uh, 4 multi-reflective shadows, 2 pressed glitters, 1 pressed pearl, 1 concealer... Oh! Ooh, one concealer base and it's meant to give you sort of everything from a very natural neutral look all the way up to like a super glittery fun fancy look yes <laughs> so this is what the palette looks like um it comes in like plastic packaging different packaging to what her other ones come in so basically what i'm going to be doing today is showing you the palette up nice and close so that you can see everything you get in here we're going to be swatching every shade in the palette live on camera so that you can see what the swatches look like and then i'm going to create a look using the palette on my eyes sort of demonstrate it see how it goes and then let you guys know whether or not i think it's actually worth the money now she does have quite a steep price point this one is going to set you back 65 us dollars if you are here in australia um, it is currently available on the Australian Sephora website for 95 Australian dollars. Um, I got mine off the Huda Beauty website and they did happen to have free shipping if you spent over 75 US dollars. It was actually cheaper for me to get this off the Huda Beauty website actually. Let me just triple check. Yeah, so with the you know currency conversion, this cost me $90.15, which is technically cheaper obviously than the Sephora website. Um, I was able to get that free shipping because I did also grab one of her new concealers. I've had a lot of requests to review this one as well. Um, but yeah, 95 here in Australia, 65 in the States. Um, honestly, the packaging on the outside is just gorgeous. And if we break that down, that means that each of the shadows in here are $3.61 US each. So this is the packaging. Like honestly, the packaging that she does on her palettes is absolutely hands down gorgeous. So, so, so beautiful. The back of the packaging um, is pink. It's sort of got like printing in purple. It says, you know, some more information about the palette. And all the ingredients are on the back of the external carton. Now, when you do purchase this off the Huda Beauty website, it comes in this little baggie. Um, it's like a foam bag for protection. Also came with a little card. Um, I did find this a bit funny. Um, obviously, Hood has written a note on the back of this and then they've photocopied the cards, but there's actually a spelling mistake in there. I'm finicky about English and grammar. <laughs> and so I noticed these things straight away. I mean, the card's really pretty and it's a sweet little message, um, but they may want to do a spell check before printing more of these. <laughs> I could honestly stare at this palette all day. It's so beautiful. Um, there's Hooda's face in the background. Um, most of the packaging is matte and then nude is sort of written in like a shiny sort of, it's actually a little bit reflective. It's really pretty. And then you've got new and Huda Beauty in like a rose gold print. Let's open it up. Oh, stop it. It's so beautiful. Okay, so for starters, it comes with a really nice big mirror and the packaging does feel really nice and luxurious. It's heavy. Um, it feels like good quality packaging. I love, love, love that the, um, you know, the insert to sort of protect the shadows has the same image of her printed on the front. She's got the most beautiful brows and eyebrows. Oh, yay! So everyone always hangs it on me because my eyebrows are uneven, like one is higher than the other. Who does that too, guys? Eyebrows should not be twins. <laughs> oh my gosh, there are some really interesting textures in here. Oh, so this is what all of these shadows look like. Honestly, I don't think I've ever looked at something more visually appealing than this. This is absolutely beautiful. Even prettier in person, honestly. Like, the photos of this are beautiful and all like the in Instagram images and things that are floating around. Gorgeous, but compared to in person, like, it is actually beautiful. So we've got all these beautiful matte shades. This one here is the concealer. It looks like sort of, it might actually be a little dark on anyone with, um, you know, sort of like a lighter skin tone. Um, these ones here are so interesting. They're like shimmers, but then they've got like big chunks of like, it's sort of like a white pearlescent sort of a, hopefully you can see that. Like, they're just gorgeous. You've got your two pressed glitters here. Honestly, like, 
as far as like uh, visually, it's a stunning, stunning eyeshadow palette. So yeah, that is what the palette looks like. Like I said, 65 US dollars. We're going to jump into the swatches of this now and then we're going to be trying this on my eyes and seeing how it goes. If you've seen my other reviews on the Huda Beauty eyeshadow palettes, you will know um, that the Desert Dusk palette I enjoyed. Um, you know, I'm able to use that, but then the Rose Gold Remastered was a total fail for me. So I'm interested in seeing how this one goes. And actually, um, I have had a lot of requests to compare this to other similarly toned palettes. So I'm going to grab some comparisons. All right, so I had a lot of people asking to see it next to the Naked 3. Here is the Naked 3. As you can see, very, very little comparison between the two. And the Naked 3 appears to be much, much, much more cool toned. Also had a lot of people requesting to see it next to the Naked Cherry. So this is Urban Decay's latest release. Absolutely obsessed with this palette. Absolutely obsessed. And oh, let's try not to gouge your finger in any of these eyeshadows like you usually do. <gasps> Here are the two side by side. So there's definitely a lot more comparisons between the Naked Cherry and the Huda Beauty, but still, again, very, very different. Different textures, uh, different mattes, different shimmers, like... I wouldn't say, you know, if you've already got this one to discredit this completely, um, but at the same time, there are definitely similar undertones and definitely similar shades. I'll be able to give you more of an idea on this after I've used it, obviously, but I'm obsessed with the Naked Cherry. And if you're into those sort of rich, you know, warm tone reds and pinks and plums, I'd totally recommend that palette. So yes, we're going to jump into the shades and then into the demo and then into the final review. All right, so here's another look at the external packaging of the palette. Absolutely beautiful. And those reflective letters that just, it gives it a whole nother edge. And these are all the shadows inside. Like honestly, like I said earlier, one of the most beautiful, like absolutely most beautiful palettes I've ever seen. All the different textures and those beautiful pink tones. Like, oh, totally, totally shook. Now, swatches. So we're going to do the first half first. So this is bare. Bear in mind, uh, bear in mind, no pun intended. I do have a lot of difficulty swatching majority of these matte shades. As you can see, you know, you get that sort of patch of shadow at the top and then the rest kind of disappears. Fantasy, this is one of those multi-dimensional shimmers. Then we've got Love Bite. Really had a difficult time swatching this deep matte plum. Then we have Spanked. Again, a lot of difficulty with swatching this. I had to go in multiple times with all of these mattes and really rub the pigment into the skin to to get them to blend out. Daydream is a beautiful shimmery color followed by Tickle, this sort of medium pink. Again, rubbing it in so that you guys can get a better look at the color. And also Excite, this is one of the glitters and these also do swatch particularly difficultly, um, but I mean, it's a banging color, it's gorge. So moving on to the next ones, we have Infatuated. This is the second of the glitters. This shade here, uh, Kinky, this one swatched the best out of the entire palette. And this one that I'm working on now, this is actually the cream concealer. Again, um, you know, back through with these mattes, having a really hard time kind of getting them to show up on the skin. But once they are rubbed in and once that pigment is sort of really distributed across the surface, the colors are really pretty. They're just, they're particularly bad shadows for finger swatching. I don't know. I mean, it's been the same with um, majority of the Huda Beauty palettes. I've, I've never really had one that just swatched beautifully. Um, but yeah, oh, this shimmer, I love this one. This is Charmed. And then finally we have, what is it, Teddy? Um, a pinky sort of medium muted matte. Beautiful colors, tricky swatches, but beautiful colors. All right, so those were all of these swatches. Um, I must admit, I did have quite a difficult time swatching the matte shades. As you saw, like I had to go over them multiple times for you to be able to see the full color payoff. So there's sort of more of like a, I mean, again, sw and I say this all the time, a finger swatch on an arm is in no way a representation of how good a shadow is or how good a shadow is going to perform. Um, you know, these, these are formulated to be used on the eyes with brushes. They're not formulated to be swatched on the arms, but um, just notable, you know, if you're comparing, you know, these finger swatches to other finger swatches and how her other palettes performed, um, these were still particularly difficult to swatch. I've had the same issue with all of her palettes. Um, the glitters were beautiful, but very, very difficult to finger swatch. And these shadows are very, very pretty. Like you don't actually get, you know, pieces of those like pearlescent white bits, you know, through like coming through with the swatch. They're straight up really beautiful, buttery metallic. This shade here, Kinky, probably my favorite shade from the whole palette. And it's the only one in this sort of like original, I mean, not original, but like straight up metallic satin formula. 
This one is so rich, so pigmented and swatched beautifully. Um, so yes, yeah, so we're going to jump into using the palette now. We're going to create a look. There are so many beautiful colors in this palette. I'm looking at it like, oh my gosh, how am I going to decide? Like it's nearly too hard to decide. They're gorgeous. Now, because this does come with this shade here concealed, it is a cream, like it's a cream concealer. Basically it's an eyeshadow base. That's everything that I've read, everything that I can find. It is to be used as an eyeshadow base. We're going to be using that. I do have an issue with cream products being in the same pan and not, you know, with a separate cover. Um, with eyeshadows because you know you're, you're swishing a brush in and you'll probably find as I use this parts of these shadows that are surrounding that one are going to flick off and you're going to get all of these colors in here and it's not going to be a true color anymore that is something to bear in mind I would have really liked if she'd included like I don't know like a little flap on the palette to sort of cover this up so that it could still be used you know fresh every time just taking a synthetic brush I'm going to go into concealed sort of it is in there quite hard um, I much prefer it to be a like a harder formula like this usually means it's going to be less emollient which means it's going to be less likely to crease on the eyes so applying that all over now you guys know I'm an oily skin type I suffer with oily eyelids um, it is what it is I've got certain eyeshadow primers that work really really well and others that are just terrible so I will be interesting to see how this goes I will be wearing this makeup um, probably for about eight hours today and I'll be able to let you guys know you know if I have creasing or if the glitter just ends up everywhere I'll be able to let you know all of that probably either in a pinned comment or in the description bar all right so blending this in not having the best time um, I feel like it's a little patchy. Maybe you meant to use a finger with this one. It's got nothing on a MAC paint pot. I'll give you that. Actually, you know what? I'm going to prime this eye with the MAC paint pot um, so we can see the comparison of how the shadows perform when they're used with like a straight up amazing eye primer. Hopefully you can sort of see by me doing this the difference in the coverage and the spreadability of this one in comparison to the one. Oh my gosh, it's already creasing. It's all right. I'm going to set it down with a powder. Um, but yeah, hopefully you can see the difference between like the payoff and the pigmentation between the two eye bases. Like there's obviously a really big difference there. So let's set it down. There is a beautiful matte white bone shade in this palette. This one here, it's called Bear. I'm going to use that to set down the entire lid. As far as fallout goes... There is a fair bit of fallout um, happening with this palette. And certainly if I'd been holding it upright like this, I would have had um, a fair bit of that falling into that concealer, just as an example of what I mean. I personally don't hate fallout from eyeshadows. Usually a really good pigmented eyeshadow will, you know, because of the way formulas are made, um, you're going to get a lot of fallout. There is quite a lot happening with this one though. Some people hate it, some people don't mind. Um, it's really personal preference. All right, so setting down both of those eyes. Yeah, this eyelid is looking a lot smoother, a lot more primed than this one. This one's sort of got like, I guess a little bit of texture you could say. I can already say straight up, I would have much preferred to have another eyeshadow color, maybe like another formula like this one in this palette instead of the concealer. Now we're moving into these beautiful colors. Honestly, I could stare at this palette all day. It is stunning, absolutely stunning. I think we're gonna stick to more of like the cooler tone pinks for this look today. Um, I'm gonna start out with lace, this beautiful, it's like a, lavender sort of a purple shade it's gorgeous i am getting a fair bit of product on my brush doing that and i've also already got glitter and eyeshadow in that concealer i'm gonna work that on a big fluffy brush through the outer corner so this is actually blending pretty well what I've sort of found with Huda's mattes in the past is they kind of, they stick to certain areas and they sort of get like a little patchy. Like the color will sort of, you know, be really dark in one spot and then less dark in others. That one's not too bad though. It's not too bad. I do like the concept behind this palette. Like it's new nudes, like a fresh take on nude. Because you would sort of look at this kind of a palette and think, oh, well, they're not nude shades, but kind of you know at this point in makeup and in this point in the industry these are considered nudes these are neutrals i would say that they blended out 
fairly well the same on both sides of my eyes. I don't think realistically the base has made a massive difference. Switching to a slightly smaller brush, I'm going to take Tickle, this sort of pink here. Really, really, really pretty color. And also, definitely, uh, still getting fallout with that one, but not as much fallout as we got with this original light shade here. All right, tapping off the excess. I'm gonna take that one a little bit more directly through the crease. Oh, these are so nice. Really nice colors, honestly. Pretty, that one blended really well. All right, to take things a little darker, I'm gonna go into Tease now. And we might even use a little bit of Love Bite here just to see how the deeper shade in the palette blends. Just working that right in the outer corner. I'm always tapping off the excess off my brush before going in and blending. You guys know that's how I recommend to apply shadows. Um, it's just, it's the best way to do it. And then switching to a larger blending brush, the one that we started with. I'm gonna use that to sort of haze out the edges of that darker shade. On the other side, on the Huda Concealed Base. Circular motions, always blending upwards and outwards because that's what gives you that perfect sort of seamless look. Yeah, I'm definitely not having those same issues with patchiness, which is really, really good to say. I was low key, like kind of scared. I was like, no, <laughs> but we're good. Now, this palette doesn't have a, you know, a shimmery sort of a light color um, to highlight the brow bone. So we're gonna highlight the brow bone with Bare, this matte shade. I mean, it's not a deal breaker to not have a highlighting shade. Most of us like we'll have a highlighter that we'll sort of use anyway. Um, oh, that's actually not too bad. Quite like that with a matte highlight. It's pretty. All right, we're gonna take Love Bite now, this rich purple, just on a flat brush. Oh, it does pick up quite a nice bit of pigment there. And we're gonna pack that onto the lid. I'm definitely gonna have to do more looks with this palette. There are so many options. Look, it really is beautiful. All right, so that's packed down pretty well. Now we're gonna try blend the edges. There are a couple of different ways that you can sort of approach this. You can go in with a shade that's sort of similar-ish and blend the edges. You can go in with a clean brush and blend the edges, or you can go in with a little of the original color that you've just packed down and blend the edges. I might go into raw, this slightly, actually no, I'm gonna go into this one here, this slightly redder shade. This is Spanked, oh, I love that name. Tap off the excess. And then we're going to use that to buff out those edges. All right, so that's, it's definitely left like a harsh line there. Let's go in with Love Bite, um, the same shade. Try this. Still a little patchy. Let's swap brushes. Going in with a smaller blending brush, more of Love Bite. Try blending with this. This brush is also a little bit firmer, um, like sort of more dense. That's better. So that one's not the easiest color to blend, but it certainly, you can get there in the end and yeah. Just further smoking out the edges with Spanked, like a berry. I will clean up sort of underneath here later. As far as fallout on the face goes, I do actually have very, very minimal fallout, which is amazing to see. Probably that will change now that we're gonna start going with these glitters. Except before I do that, I'm gonna take Lace, this purple. Rub that through the lower lash line. still I do still have some patchiness why definitely a little still there anyway let's continue the mattes blend really well underneath the eyes as well 
Um, I'm not feeling, you know, sometimes when you blend under the lower lash line, you get sort of like a stinging sensation. It only happens with certain eyeshadows, certain products. Um, I don't feel like anything at all. Like they feel fine. See, at this point, it is looking and feeling very much like Naked Cherry. I must admit, at this point, it looks the same. Like if I grab the Naked Cherry palette and hold it next to this eye look, you would think that I had completed this eye look using this palette for sure. I definitely got patching. I don't know if it's sort of the shadows have moved as I've been moving my eyes and blinking, but I've definitely got patchiness with this deep shade and it's right through here that you can see it. Hopefully it's picking up on camera, it may or may not. Um, but it's like darker through there. I'm gonna go into some of these beautiful pearlescent kind of tones now. They're all gorgeous, like they're honestly all beautiful. I'll show you the swatches on my fingers. So see how from the swatches though, you can't see any of those sort of chunky pearlescent pieces. They just come out as smooth metallics. And from looking at these, I wanna do this color right here. So this is charmed. Now, as far as the directions go, she says, use your fingers, a sponge brush or setting spray for maximum iridescent shine. And then you can add the glitters with a firm, dense brush for an extra pop. All right. Now I want you guys to be able to see exactly how these perform in every different way. So I'm gonna take it, it is charmed on a dry brush to start. We'll see how this goes. All right, so we've got a little bit there. They are quite soft and sort of if you press really hard, they do move around in the pan. I'm going to try the on a dry brush first. All right, so with a dry brush, you get more of like a slightly shimmery kind of, it's more like a top coat. This is a second layer with the brush. I actually don't mind how that is coming up. I actually think it looks quite pretty as a glimmery sort of top coat, you know, if you're going for something a little bit less like hardcore. Um, let's try fantasy this pinky one here. See if that's any different. Yeah, the formula sort of performs the same. It adds like a really pretty, very subtle metallic look to the eye. Now, let's try, actually first we'll go in with a wet brush. All right, so I've got MAC Fix Plus. I'm gonna wet that brush and we're going to try with a wet brush and then we'll try with our fingers. So going back into Charmed with a wet brush. Yeah, it picks up a lot more product when you use a wet brush. Now I've said this before, I've, you know, I've spoken about this. My eyes get a weird texture on them when I apply shadows with a wet brush. Um, just so you know. All right, so that's the kind of payoff we're getting with a wet brush. Still very pretty, but it's also still not extreme, extreme intensity. Um, maybe we'll try Daydream, this sort of lighter, cool tone, pinky shimmer. So brush is wet. Um, actually, we'll try over here. Mm, that didn't really work at all. I'm going back into that. And my brush is like sopping at this point. I'm really working it around. Still don't get heaps on there. Oh, that's better. Better, but still for application of a wet brush, I would want this color to be looking like this at this point. So let's try now with a finger. I feel like a finger is gonna be the best way to apply these because when you swatch them with a finger, it picks up so much pigment. So let's try this. Yeah, definitely, definitely. You wanna apply those with your finger. Oh my gosh, that is beautiful. Stop it. Oh, that's so pretty. Ooh, okay, so that is charmed there. I'm gonna pick up Daydream on this side and we'll try on this side. Yeah, definitely recommend you using a finger with those sort of pearlescent colors. You get so much more payoff, so much more payoff. Let's try Fantasy now. This is like a beautiful coppery kind of pink. Oh, look at that. Oh, that's stunning. Oh, so pretty. And then finally, Crave. Crave is like a shimmery gold, pearlescent kind of champagne kind of a color. 
Um, the only thing is it's very, very difficult to pack this kind of color on the inner corner of your eyes with your fingers because obviously your fingers are big. Um, let's try it. Oh, it's so pretty though. Oh, I want to try that one with a brush. Oh, I do feel like Crave works a little better with a wet brush than the other three did. All right, I'm loving how this side is looking. So I'm going to take Charmed and I'm going to blend it over top of those other colors. But at least you sort of got an idea of, you know, how each of those sort of pearlescent, are they, is that what they are? Multi, multi-reflective shadows. Okay, at least you saw how all four of those multi-reflective shadows performed. Now, we have to try these glitters. So her recommendation is to add the glitters with a firm, dense brush for an extra pop. This here is quite a firm, dense brush. I'm going to go into this glitter here. This is infatuated just with a dry brush first. See how it goes. Oh, it doesn't actually pick up. Cool. I'm going to pat that over the eye. Oh my gosh, look at that. Oh, so sparkly. All right, so that glitter is definitely applying fairly well with a dry brush. Let's try wetting this. I hope this video isn't too long for you guys. I just, I want you to be able to see absolutely everything before spending your money because this is expensive. So with a wet brush, definitely picks up more on the actual brush. I would say it packs down more as well. Like by all means, it still works with a dry brush, but you are going to get more of that glitter transferring onto your lid with a wet one. So this is sort of what the eyes are looking like now. Applying that um, shimmery color and the glitter has definitely sort of overtaken that patchiness that I had from that deeper shade. That shadow was the only one that I did find patchy like that. And you can sort of see underneath my eyes here, I do have a fair bit of fallout, but that's okay because I haven't finished off my base makeup. I very, very, very rarely will put concealer powder and everything else on before doing my eyes because this happens. This is a normal thing to happen with eyeshadows um, and it will mess up your entire base. So what I'm going to do now is actually go and finish my makeup off camera and then I'll be back to give you my final thoughts on the Huda Beauty nude palette. All right, so I'm back and I've got the rest of my makeup on. Now that everything is done, I I am actually obsessed with this eyeshadow look. The glitter is so multi-reflective. At some points it looks pink, at some points it looks copper, at some points it's got like little bits of silver. It is gorgeous guys, absolutely gorgeous. Now, as far as this palette goes, um, I wanna go through some pros and some cons because I do believe that this is going to be one of those products that you're going to have to make. I mean, for some people it's gonna be perfect and for others it's not. It, it'll make more sense soon. For starters, price point, it is extremely expensive. 65 US dollars, 95 Australian dollars like no word of a lie you are paying a pretty penny for this um i do believe that the overall you know aesthetic kind of feel of the palette and um, the packaging the way that it looks when you open it up the big mirror like definitely all of these types of things are totally worth paying that money for um i do think it is a really good quality product you know as far as that goes it feels good it feels sturdy i don't feel like it's flimsy and it's just going to break um you know it's printed beautifully you've got multi sort of dimensional aspects to the packaging it's gorgeous to look at, like not gonna lie. Also with that price point, you are paying for some eyeshadow textures that haven't really been seen in other palettes. Obviously we do have lots of pressed glitters in palettes now, but certainly those multi-dimensional colors, those four shimmer shades, they're a new formula that I personally haven't seen any other brands do. I mean, you've got glitters, you've got multi-dimensional sort of reflective shimmers, you've got this beautiful rich satin shimmer, and then a whole host of mattes plus a concealer. Like as far as, you know, paying money and paying a price for a bunch of different, you know, types of eyeshadow textures. Definitely can say as well, worth it. Now you saw from the swatches that this palette did not swatch very well at all. The shimmers did, the glitters were tricky and the mattes were basically terrible at finger swatching, but then you saw them perform on my eyes in you know a very different way. Um, the only shadow that I had difficulty with in this palette was this one here, Love Bite. You saw that I was able to correct that with some shimmer, but by all means, because of all the different textures in this palette, because of you know the difficulty sort of with that matte, um, with the difficulty of 
of being able to apply the glitters and the shimmers in the way that they need to be applied, I personally would not recommend this palette to beginner makeup users. So if you're just sort of starting to get into makeup, you're you know learning techniques, you're learning how to blend things, you're learning how to apply things, um, I'm not going to be recommending this to you because it does take a little bit of finessing and some different application techniques to get it to work. By all means, you can get it to work, but it is a little bit more tricky to work with. It's not just your straight up eyeshadow palette that's super easy to use. You do need to use your fingers. You do need to use wet brushes. Um, you know, you do need to be very careful with this concealer so not to transfer any other eyeshadow in there. I will say, not a fan of the concealer. I wish that this wasn't in there. I do wish that instead we had like another shimmer shade to really balance out the palette. Perhaps a really beautiful, like really light sort of shimmer shade like this. That would have been gorgeous. Um, yeah, I just feel like it's it's already got eyeshadow all in there. And I've only used a palette once. Once I've used this a bunch of times, it's just going to be filthy. And it's a cream, so things are just going to attract to it and stick to it. So not at all a fan of this. I do wish that they would get rid of this but all of the other colors with the exception of this one are gorgeous now i do love the color of that it just wasn't that easy to blend we got there in the end but then i felt like over time it's sort of it's like it darkened up in the crease area and it just i don't know that was really the only one that just was no good for me. But everything else blended really well. So in comparison to the Rose Gold Remastered, I think this is a much better performing palette. The mattes actually blend out without getting patchy, which is really, really good to see. The shimmers actually transfer onto the lid with a brush, which again, really, really amazing to see. Um, if you've seen my um, you know, other Huda Beauty eyeshadow palette reviews, you will know what I'm talking about. If you haven't, I'll pop them down below. Yeah, the Rose Gold Remastered, you'll be shocked at that like it and I've got I've got two videos testing it out and it's no but overall I think this is a beautiful beautiful palette I definitely will be using it more I definitely think it's worth it um, not for beginners, if you're a little bit more sort of intermediate or, you know, you're a real makeup lover and you're comfortable with working with different textures, with different application techniques, I think that you will adore this. But for beginners, I'd be steering more towards something, you know, that's a lot easier to apply. So yes, those are my thoughts on the new Huda Beauty Nude Palette, guys. I hope this video helped you out. Um, if you've got any more questions about it. Um, you know, please pop them down below. As I said, it's going to depend on sort of where you are at with makeup and where you are at with different application techniques and textures as to whether or not this is going to be a good one for you. But as always, watch as many reviews as possible on different skin tones, on different skin types and make an informed decision. Now, I will be wearing this, um, you know, the rest of the day. I will update you guys on if the glitter sort of falls out everywhere and it just turns into a hot mess. So far, no glitter has fallen out. Like so far, it's really stayed packed on the lid there and I'm not seeing a massive massive difference between the side where I use the MAC paint pot and the Huda Beauty concealer but if it creases or if it goes manky later on I'll be sure to let you guys know so yes I love you all so so much I hope that you enjoyed the video and I will catch you all in my next one